Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my first podcast. Well, I don't want to say my first podcast because this is definitely going to be a collaborative effort between me and my husband. So the first podcast, uh, we entitled it Getting Spooked because that seemed pretty, pretty related to what we got going on here. So I was doing a little digging to kind of see what I wanted to do content wise. And I had somebody, a member in my discord, as I was talking to them about maybe doing a Scientology video or something kind of related. And he mentioned to me that there was a religion in which they, they worshiped lobsters, which I thought was kind of weird, um, at first. And I did a little bit of digging and it was really hard for me to not think that it was a meme. I didn't want to offend anybody or anything. So I kind of went in there just poking around, um, and I was able to, to secure an interview with actually the bishop and the keeper of the lobsters, which um, is kind of crazy that they actually have somebody raising lobsters for this religion. So let me explain a little bit about what this religious, religious experience is for them. So what they believe in this religion is basically that this lobster theoretically of course because we we do have to say theoretically because nobody really even knows that lobsters do not die lobsters molt until they can no longer molt so they will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger so in theory with this religion is that they will assist these lobsters in molting to become leviathan size and bring their god the lobster to life in this existence now i know what you're thinking okay yeah this is this is crazy this is weird which is why i thought it was a meme went to their facebook check things out and you know it, they have commandments claw commandments, not commandments so i mean they okay so in services what they provide and they provide services here the services that they provide is a confession. The bishop will be holding confession through email, or you can try to get scheduled for an online session, and these are all free. They offer a holy mass, which the bishop or a priest will hold virtually every Saturday morning around 11 Eastern um, on YouTube and on live streams. Oh, yes, the holy commandments. These are a list of kind of like, you know, the seven commandments, how Christians have about how to be in this religion. And it's actually very welcoming. They go by they, them, um, as far as addressing people, nobody's kind of segregated into gender roles or anything like that. Everybody is welcome. It's kind of a, it's very much a self-love type of religion. So the first one is the clawed one, the holy shellfishness is a genderless being. They're above all archaic constructs of gender any generalization of the clawed one is a sin. So that's very important to them as far as to put that as number one, which I really, I really respect that. Treat everyone how they would like to be treated is number two. Number three, love thyself. Four, treat and love every day, knowing that our lives are free from rubber band restraints. As you can imagine, it, it would be rough to be, you know, a lobster, you know, with those things on your claws, right? Number five is shells must be discarded when they are no longer useful, metaphorically as well as physically. Number six is all followers must recycle and work to cut down on pollution in order to honor the lobster god. Number seven, no consumption without ceremony. Now, this is something that I found is a, a very common question here that, you know, can we eat lobster being in this religion? Well, apparently you can, because if thou shalt choose to consume lobster, a piece must be left out for our Lord. As lobsters consume lobs as lobsters consume lobsters, so too are we permitted to follow in the god lobster's footsteps. Give thanks and offerings whenever lobster is consumed. Now this one is my favorite one because I just so kind of like what? Number eight is no raw broccoli on Thursday. And we'll get into that at the interview because that was, 
I wanted that to be my first question, but I think that there was other questions that were more important than that one. Although the broccoli one is really important. I love broccoli. So, all right. Now what we have all been waiting for, we have the interview with the bishop and the keeper of the lobsters. We also have progress pictures of the lobsters. And it is glorious. So welcome to Getting Spooked. The first thing I want to ask that really kind of concerned me when I came across this thing or when I was suggested the religion, it's not a meme, right? This whole thing is not a meme. It's legitimately something that you guys want to do, right? I would say it's a little bit of kind of whatever you, however you want to take it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Just like any other religion, it's as serious as you want to make it. It can also be as big of a joke as you want to make it. Like, I, I agree. I agree with that. They, like, um, if it, however you want to take it is how you sort of accept it. Right. So like, I, I have the the two lobsters, and you've got like people that, you know, they like them as the being like the gods and stuff like that, and then you just have other people like, oh, he's just got two lobsters. You know what I mean? So how did how did it come about? I I saw in the uh, the other interview that you did, Bishop, about how the you had a friend or, or some uh, there was a girl that started the Facebook and it just kind of exploded. Um, what I kind of want to know is is why a lobster? Why not another kind of crustacean? Was there some kind of significance for the lobster? I well, the lobster has a unique quality amongst other animals in that. Theoretically speaking, of course, it's that it can't really die of old age. So that that I think that's really where it came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was probably also some sort of inside joke that uh, Katie, the original uh, creator, that she had with all of her friends about it. I do want to, before we kind of get into everything else, you both have very significant roles. Can you both kind of describe what your roles are? in the religion itself to give kind of everybody an understanding well uh i'm the bishop uh i kind of just organize the clergy and the uh official scripture and beliefs and uh whatnot and i do sermons from time to time on youtube and tiktok and i run the uh website as well uh, i look after two lobsters that uh, one day uh, hopefully we sort of grow to be very big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are some what are some of kind of the other roles that you're looking to establish as the you know, the religion grows? Well I'd love to have a full clergy. In order to do that we have to uh do some legal stuff uh, to get legally recognized so we could legally ordain other people. It's really it's really not going to be that serious. I'm not thinking about setting up like a physical church right. or anything, but similar to like the Universal Life Church, if you're familiar. I am, yeah. Or, I actually uh, got know, ordained. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So something like that. Just a fun little website where people can go on and uh, maybe not even charge and just get ordained. Okay, cool. So that's just kind of still like in the thought process. Nothing's been filed or anything like that. Right. We tried in the past to do all that. It just kind of became pretty political. A lot of people's feelings got hurt. Several people had to end up getting kicked out of the organization. So we're really just taking our time with right. setting something like that up. Yeah, it does cause a lot of drama. I definitely feel that managing any kind of community is just, it's difficult. Right. So, yeah. Carl, this question is for you. Um, so you, I know that you mentioned that you have, have two lobsters. Um, how, yeah. how is that going? I mean, what is their demeanor like? Can you pet them? Can you cuddle them? Do they bite? Are they pretty big now? Um, well, it's sort of like with any lobster, you, you touch them, you can do every one, but as soon as you start putting your hands or your fingers or anything in front of their face, they, they will try to take your fingers off. Oh, wow. <laughs> is their, their pitch um, that strong that they could do something like that? I mean, I'm, I've never really even seen a lobster aside from, you know, grocery stores and on a plate, so. Yeah, like, so they've got, like, that two 
sort of like set. So you've got your set, you've got your, your crushing claw and a cutting claw, mm-hmm. which is usually the thinner of the two. A crushing claw would sort of just it would just crush your fingers. Right. All the bones in your fingers will just be broken, non-existent, and the cutting claw would just easily just cut through the skin. Oh Jesus, that's terrifying. As this lobster grows, and they theoretically are are going to grow, you know, the size of a, a leviathan monster, um, the would you? I guess I'm not even sure. I probably should have done research on this. But how do lobsters molt? Would you peel the skin off to kind of help them, or do they just do it on their own, and you just kind of monitor to make sure that there's no trouble with them? Uh, so uh, when when mine molt um i sort of i'll sit keep an eye on everything make sure everything's okay but um if they start if if it starts to stick to them a bit i'll just put my hand in the water and like sort of force a bit of water underneath mm. the uh, like the, the old shell and it just lift it up a bit so it just pulls it away and it doesn't hurt okay so you do help them a little bit kind of i guess how you yeah. would do with like a snake you know who's got like stuff stuff Irvix. yeah yeah oh, okay Cool, cool. So as soon as this this lobster or lobsters, because I know that you mentioned, Bishop, that it may not even be just one, it may be a bunch of them that happen to grow to this size. So what happens when they grow to this size? What would their diet be then? I mean, we're not going to be, you know, sacrificing people to them, I assume, but... You know, what well, would they be not eating? Rule anything out yet. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> let's not rule anything out. That's always a possibility. You may have people wanting to, you know, throw themselves in the clutches of the Lord, but you know how people get, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I imagine we'll just, if they get that big, we'll just have to start feeding them whatever will fit in their mouth. Right. Small Volkswagens, etc. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, that is so cool. I know that you had mentioned, you know, that people do go through molting cycles, sometimes several, sometimes, you know, at the end of life. Um, you want to kind of explain a little bit about that and the theory behind that? Sure. So molting is basically just another word for like a milestone. So like uh, you're getting rid of a bad habit or maybe uh, you're in a new relationship or maybe you got a new job or maybe it is the final molt in which you pass away. Um, that's really just basically the idea behind it is, uh, you're becoming a better person. You're never staying still. You're always trying to improve yourself, your own life and the lives of other people around you. Very nice. Very nice. How many times have you molted in your life? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, uh, probably countless. (laughs) Yeah. I think I can say that as well. How about you, Carl? How many times have you molted in life? I think I'm, I'm getting the like, the same, the same as everybody else. It's countless. Yeah, definitely. Especially these days and times, life is changing just so consistently. You just can't even keep up with it. Surely is. Definitely, definitely. So I know that you have the claw mandments. Um, I I know that you've explained them before. I definitely want to drive people to your um the documents that you have now. So we won't go over the claw mandments now. Um, but my final question and the question I think that everybody will want to know when they read these, these commandments is why no broccoli on Thursday? Well, you know, it, that one is mostly kind of a joke, mm-hmm. you know, when you're reading these ancient texts written by these people who would have no idea what the modern, what the modern world would be like, there's always stuff in there that just doesn't really quite make sense mm-hmm. in a modern context. And so I think we were just trying to have some fun and throw in something that will just be like, wait, what does that say? Yeah, it definitely does catch your eye. That was the very first thing that I saw in there. I was like, wait a minute. That's interesting, but okay. Everybody kind of has their own thing about, you know, is it lobsters only drug broccoli or, you know, what have you. Um, But yeah, so take a moment to kind of um, plug your stuff. You have any kind of, I know that you mentioned you had a TikTok and all of that. Where can people find you guys um, in regards to the religion, personal, whatever you want to throw out there? Well, the main, the main group is on Facebook. They are called plans to uh, create and worship a Leviathan lobster God. 
And I'll link all of this below as well. So. Yeah, it's just a giant group. That's where you're going to find the most content and the most discussion. Um, but we also do have a YouTube. It's called Holy Order of the Claw. And I'm running a, a little TikTok where I'm just posting, or I'm going to start posting just tiny little sermons, like 30 seconds. Uh, just gentle reminders of the Claw Commandments and things like that. And that's called Bishop Webb. Okay, cool, cool. And Carl? Um, I have. A, I'm going to start making a TikTok soon of my sort of adventures out at sea and doing uh, stuff like that. Um, is that's where I've picked up the lobsters and why I look after them. And I've also got a Snapchat if people want to ask us and messages for um, like if they want to ask us any questions about how we do things and what we do, stuff like that. That's completely fine. Cool. So are, are you a fisherman? I was asking Bishop, but he wasn't too sure. Yes. Nice. Nice. Cool. I don't know. People on TikTok love that stuff on the boats. They are always... TikTok is very kind of like conspiracy theorists, and they think like mermaids and stuff are out there. <laughs> I can't say whether or not it's true. I'm not a fan of the ocean. I have thalassophobia. Not very like significantly, but I definitely would rather die than be on a boat in the middle of the ocean but i personally have never seen a mermaid you never have <laughs> not <laughs> yet have you heard there's... them though because apparently there's videos on tiktok where they hear the sirens crying and there's this huge discussion about it uh i've never heard them but i'm assuming what the stuff that's on tiktok is probably just like whale calls and stuff they're just edited and yeah for sure for sure yeah well, you're you're a brave soul, a brave brave soul. Well, I thank you guys so much for for coming on here and walking me through my first podcast. I was really freaking nervous. I hope you guys had a good time and it wasn't too kind of like formal. Oh, it was so. great. Thanks oh. for having us. With that being said, we are wrapping up the very first episode of Getting Spooked any kind of comments that you have if you really like the podcast or the content in it please let me know i'd love to do more for you so just leave a like comment or subscribe even i would really appreciate it and it would help me out a lot and all of the information in regards to the holy order of the claw will be linked below as we discussed Um, i will also link the information for carl and the bishop below as well so you can follow their instagrams and things like that i know that we kind of touched on um with carl the since he's a fisherman he's out at sea and things like that um experiencing things on an open ocean i'm thinking about maybe having him back to discuss those things um i don't spend much time out in the ocean and i'm pretty sure you don't so i think that that would be really interesting so let me know if that's something that you would like to do i'll talk to him and we will work on that for you anyway thank you so much for supporting me in this and all of the changes that we're doing and all the new stuff that we're trying i really hope this podcast takes off because <laughs> i really just i would love to do this full time because it's just so much fun. So if you want to support my channel, the links are below. If you want to follow me on socials, links are below. And again, thank you for listening. Have a good weekend. We'll see you soon.